Hello, uh, welcome to my Two Cents podcast. Uh, my name is G Two, and I am uh, today with WWE veteran and New Japan professional wrestler, Mister Fred Rosser. Uh, how's your day, sir? I'm doing well, and I like the introduction. Veteran is what I like to call myself. I don't like to say former. You know, former sounds washed up. You know, former WWE superstar. I like to say veteran because my journey with WWE started way back in. 2003, when I was part of my first ever Survivor Series commercial as an extra. So from 2003 to 2009, uh, I did the independence and I did over 40 tryouts with WWE until I got that yes in 2009. So that's why I always am proud to call myself a WWE veteran. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to jump right into it. Um, You've been asked a lot of questions about the Nexus thing, and you have the Nexus armband behind your, well, behind the original your, too. Yeah, the original. Um, Nexus to me is technically is goes down to literally one of the most like underrated like groups. People will always say the most promising. I always say underrated because you guys kind of got a little bit of a short end of the stick here. Mm -hmm. Um, we all know if you're in the professional wrestling landscape. If you have um, the WWE Network, they were supposed to show off a Nexus documentary, but apparently it got shelved. <laughs> no reason why. Um, I'll tell you the reason why. I the uh, sorry, I kind of get on a tangent and I get off track. So you got to keep us on track. Um, you know, uh, one of the reasons why uh, it could have been. Daniel Bryan going to AEW, or it could have been uh, last May, me wearing my New Japan track jacket on the set of the filming that they invited me to. I didn't call WWE back. They called me back to be a part of this documentary. And I said, sure, no problem. And I showed up uh, and I planned it out because I knew they were gonna ask me to take my jacket off. So I wore it proudly. And as soon as we started filming, just like you and I, it's almost like you, Mr. Garrett, saying, oh, do you mind if you take off your New Japan uh, compression shirt or, you know, at the time it was my track jacket. And I would have said to you, you know, Mr. Garrett, I worked very hard for this New Japan track jacket and you guys just inducted Jushin Liger into the WWE Hall of Fame. So if this documentary is supposed to be uncut and uncensored, Nexus style, then let me just be me. And, you know, 10 plus years later, I'm not some washed up wrestler, you know, I'm still active and I'm active with New Japan and very proud of it. And I remember the producer saying, you know, no problem, you sold me on it. Because I also told him that I had talked to John Laurinaitis weeks before we did this Nexus interview and uh, John Laurinaitis was just checking up on me because he originally hired me in 2009. And um, I told him I'm doing well. I'm with New Japan making moves. And John Laurinaitis was the guy that talked to me about uh, possibly maybe doing a um, collaboration. And this was, you know, uh, last year. So who knows? Who knows what's going to happen as we speak? Because the landscape of wrestling is so major. Yes, is is wrestling is major. But before I get off the Nexus thing, is there anything like legally you could technically talk about the Nexus documentary since we won't get to see it somewhere like in the future? Is there anything that you could like slip in? Well, I mean, pretty much what I'm talking to you uh, about, you know, everything that you know went down. Pretty much the interview talked about the history of uh, the original NXT, all the ups and downs we went through with that, uh, doing Nexus, me not being comfortable with myself because I wasn't out to the world, you know, I wasn't comfortable with myself. So uh, my potential with the Nexus wasn't, wasn't any good because I just wasn't comfortable. But now, you know, 10 plus years later, uh, I'm so confident and I'm happy with the moves we made. You know, it, I, I use that platform that I built with NXT, the original NXT and Nexus, and I'm using it today, um, making moves with New Japan. But yeah, pretty much I talked about how the NXT uh, 
originally was like an obstacle course. It was like a game show. And I hated it because uh, when on NXT, you have guys juggling, you know, just imagine uh, Tommaso Ciampa uh, being in an obstacle, having to juggle and do these wacky uh, obstacles and you fail. Um, no one's going to take you seriously, you know, so it took me that much longer to be taken seriously uh, as we speak, 19 years plus in the business, 20 years will be uh, November. Um, I mean, 20 years will be uh, um, uh, September for me that I've been wrestling. Finally, I'm getting some recognition, you know, and I didn't have it when I was with the Nexus because I just wasn't comfortable. So I pretty much just talked about my journey. Uh, I pretty much talked about uh, journey in WWE. My uh, my best friend was Heath Slater. Uh, at the time, I didn't like Justin Gabriel, uh, PJ Black, because he was just very picky, very, very metrosexual. Um, but all those guys, we still stay in contact through a text, uh, text thread. And yeah, you know, everyone everyone still loves one another. So, yeah, I mean, for me, uh, nothing I say is off limits. Uh, I can plan these interviews the best way I can, but I work better by speaking from the heart, you know? I know that's, you know, that is a good thing to hear because you hear about a lot of people not truly liking each other, even though they went through the whole transition as a group and they get out of it, they're like, thank God I'm out of it. I'm no longer going to deal with this person. It's good to hear that you guys are still having a text thread. It's great to hear that as a fan. Um, yeah, we're a lot Yeah, we're a lot older now. Again, we were younger back then, very competitive, you know. When you're not comfortable with yourself and you just, you know, you become the weakest link. And I remember uh, – I remember I, at one time I was called the weakest link, but in all actuality, I was the missing link. Uh, and look at me now. Yeah, you're the only one, like, I say you're, like, literally the only one, like, lasting on wrestling technically because Ring of Honor kind of went, they're coming back, but they had to go off hiatus, but Justin Gabriel yes. went there, and you're in New Japan, and you're still actively out there in whether it be uh, New Japan or any other local events, you're still out there performing yeah. and, and look at you, you're still in incredible shape. Yeah, you know, literally, I just got back from Seattle uh, and, uh, you know, working with New Japan, it's, you know, it's a different pace, you know, way different than WWE I'm putting in. I'm working with young lions. I'm working with guys that are like 10, 15 years younger than me. So it's a treat to be able to elevate talent and be able to tell my own stories and, you know, win match of the year, not once, but twice with New Japan, New Japan Strong. So, yeah, again, I get on a tangent, but uh, you are here to keep us on track. It you know what? I actually like the tangent. If you do go on a tangent, trust me, I'm going to let it all fly because trust me, I'm a guy that likes to go on a tangent myself whenever I have something just directly on my mind. And I have to say, the Nexus shirt was like literally the first wrestling memorabilia that I remember my mother buying from me whenever I was coming from home. And I remember on the laptop, she said, well, How old you, are you? Uh, 26, well, 25. I about to turn 26 so okay so so you were like 14 15 right i believe younger younger around the time younger, huh? 2000 2011 younger around that yeah just started high school whenever the nexus thing just happened yeah i just love you know uh i'm who did i just uh uh, you know, Gabriel Kidd, you know, uh, with New Japan. Again, I get on a tangent. Gabriel Kidd, he's 24, I believe. I'm 38. And uh, we just wrestled a couple of days ago in Seattle. And it was a tough bout, let me just say. It was tough. But he was telling me stories about how he was watching me in the Nexus. And now him and I are sharing the ring. And he is literally whooping my ass man so you'll definitely have to check that out when it airs for new japan strong but uh yeah it's funny like 
I feel like an old timer, you know, I, I don't like to be, I don't like to be grizzled like an old timer or negative like the old timers, but yeah, I literally feel like an old timer now because, you know, you're interviewing me, uh, but you are watching me in, in, in my, in my heyday in WWE back in 2010, 11. So yeah, it's pretty wild that I can, can consider myself an old timer. I mean, that's good. You have longevity. That's the great thing about certain professional wrestlers don't have longevity as we've seen. Like if you talk about the nineties and eighties wrestlers that they try to come back in 2000s, they couldn't move as that, but you, you're still able to move and wrestle even with the younger crop of talent that is at new Japan and with new Japan, with this whole thing happening, who do you want to see step through the doors of new Japan strong, whether they're in New Japan or they're technically not with New Japan, but since the door is so open. Yeah, I put out a New Year's resolution that uh, my New Year's resolution for 2022 would be to, of course, end COVID and to somehow, some way see Daniel Bryan or CM Punk come to New Japan strong, not just New Japan, pro wrestling but new japan strong because new japan strong is an up-and-coming show it's an up-and-coming brand that um has a lot of eyes on it more eyes in japan than here in the u.s so uh, i think having these guys come through and work with me and guys like jay white and leo rush um would be meaningful to me because uh, i pride myself on calling myself uh, the Tommy Dreamer of New Japan Strong. Tommy Dreamer was the heart and soul of ECW, and I consider myself the heart and soul of New Japan Strong. And I think God gives us all a lane, and it's very important for us to stay in our lane because no one can beat us when we stay in our lane and focus on our goals. And I got that from Tyler Perry because he's been a big inspiration of mine when it comes to just, you know, following your dreams and not giving up. And uh, just as much as people look up to me for inspiration, some of my inspirations are, like I said, Tyler Perry, Will Smith, Tom Hanks, Denzel Washington. Those are some big inspirations of mine. So I've got to continue to be that inspiration for not only the LGBTQ community, but anyone that gets bullied in the silence with my whole block, the hate movement. And, you know, honestly, at the end of the day, whether it's on the big screen or uh, on social media, I want people to see me in a ring. And if they can identify with me, they can say to themselves, well, if he can do it, so can I. And I've been able to do that with, you know, the likes of Sonny Kiss and Sonya Deville, uh, probably making it a lot easier for them to embrace himself and walk into any locker room. So I'm happy to say that uh, I am a trailblazer for uh, those amazing athletes. You are, sir. And I just wish that a lot of people would see the uh, type of stuff that you are putting out, like the messaging. And I want people to understand that you, it's a new, and I don't mean to rip off the new day, but it technically is a new day here and everybody can be themselves, everybody can love themselves. It doesn't matter who you do love. It's all about you being comfortable in your own skin and what the world changes so much. I believe that you can be yourself much more in any aspect, whether it be a nine to five or even an entertainment job, you could just be yourself and everybody will embrace who you truly are. Yeah, you know, and it's funny, I got a text from my dad today and I posted it on uh, Twitter. I posted it in my story and the text pretty much said this morning, you know, son, like, how come, how come you're not, um, how come you're not with uh, AEW? How come you're not with Impact? You know, all these other wrestlers, because my dad's a huge fan. Uh, He's the one that got me into wrestling, you know, so he's a huge, huge fan. Uh, So he just texted me randomly this morning and said, how come, uh, everyone else is getting picked up, but, you know, I'm not getting picked up. Well, I told him uh, again and again that my own happiness is more important than anything. And uh, I rather, I rather, for example, I rather make less money 
and be happy than make a lot of money in WWE and not be utilized and not be happy. You know what I mean? There comes a point when, yeah, you can make a lot of money, but if you're not happy, you know, it's not, uh, it's not worth it. It's not worth it to me. So I rather just make less and be utilized to the best of my ability and just be happy at the end of the day. And my dad, for some reason, he doesn't get that. He doesn't get that. But in a way, I look at it as him kind of motivating me to not give up. So uh, I don't look at it as a problem. Uh, I, I look at it as a solution. He's motivating me to do more, to push more. So, um, but in any rate, I rather just stick with New Japan uh, because I'm having a blast and I, I feel at home with them. I, I feel like I'm com- contributing somehow, some way. Uh, in a positive way in the wrestling world. So that's what it's all about. Um, five people dead or alive you would have dinner with and why? That's a great question because uh, I have my own podcast that I'd like to do for fun for Umbro Wrestling. And that's one question that I ask. Uh, I ask 21 rapid fire questions. And I don't say five, I say three because uh, uh, that's just how it is. Um, but five people dead or alive, who would I have over for dinner? Yes. And the reason why, yes. Okay. The Rock, uh, because as big as he is, um, uh, anytime I saw him, he's always known me by my name. He's always shown me love. Uh uh, he's always here and there commenting on some of my stuff on social media. So, uh, it, it, and just the stuff he posts, uh, like I mentioned, the people that are inspirations to me, he's one of them. You see how he does his Instagram stories. He's always smiling and he's just like, he just lights up a room. So he's a big inspiration that I'd love to have over for dinner. Um, I think the second one would have to be, uh, I'll say Barack Obama. Barack Obama, because uh, I think there's a lot of wisdom there. Um, he's uh, he's just so soft spoken, calm, cool, and collected, and he, he speaks so eloquently. I can learn. I can learn from him. So I would have to say the Rock, Barack, and. Um, uh, I'd have to say, uh, let me just say the third person, uh, let's say Heath Slater, because him and I are big, uh, big, uh, cannabis connoisseurs. So, uh, I gotta have, I gotta have Heathy baby there. So rock, Barack, Heath, um, you can throw Titus in. <laughs> Titus, uh, trying to see hmm Hmm, i need a woman you said uh you said three fame uh you said five famous people it could be it could be five people dead or alive it doesn't have to be famous okay uh i'd like to have maybe my grandmother um my grandmother on my mom's side because she's always had a She's always had a foul mouth. And I think hearing her talk like Medea would be pretty funny in front of Heath, Heath, uh, Barack, and The Rock. So that's so that's four, did that's I name? Four. That's four. Okay. And the fifth would have to be, let's say, Vince McMahon. Because Vince McMahon, I always say I'll never have a bad word to say about Vince McMahon because he gave me an opportunity uh, with Bob Backlund. When I was done teaming with Titus, I always say the most intimidating thing about Vince McMahon is the office door. And once you get through his office door, you know, the sky's the limit. You got to have a game plan. But he was the one that gave me the, the opportunity to work with Bob. I had presented Vince McMahon with, uh, uh, with visuals and the storyline all written out. And he loved it. And he contacted Bob Backlund and we started rocking and rolling with our storyline. It's just unfortunate that the people that work under Vincent Mann didn't have my back. So I'll never have a bad thing to say about Vincent Mann. He's always been kind to me. And 
I think those are the five people I love to have over. Uh, my grandmother on my mom's side, uh, The Rock, Barack, Heath, and what was the other one? And so, so those are my five. What yeah. is something people don't know about you, whether it could be fans or anybody? Uh, I love to give massages. I'm very affectionate. And uh, I love to make my, I hate using the word partner, but my, my, my boyfriend, I like to make them feel comfortable. So I love to give massages. Okay. What's your favorite thing to do to relax your mind? Relax my mind. I love R&B music. I love relaxing R&B music. Uh, to name some old heads, uh, I, 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 I almost said Vince. I meant Whitney Houston, Mariah Carey, Monica, um, uh, Mary J. Blige, just old school uh, r and I love that. I love the new school r and So, yeah, I'm a calm, cool, collected individual. Same. Uh, I'm not much into r and I'm more into rap, and I'm trying to, like, expand my music palette out there, so try to get into R&B try yeah well uh, I always say there's a time and a place for the hippity hoppity and uh when I was with WWE traveling a lot of us would carpool and a lot of people love driving with me because I did all the driving but I said anyone that drove with me that if you drive with me we're not listening to any hippity hoppity because coming coming out of raw at 11 o'clock at night we're tired. I need some relaxing music because, you know, we're on, we're on 10, you know, during the show, like rock stars, but eventually we got to come down. And if you ride with me, you're going to be listening to R&B music and I'm going to rock you to sleep. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> um, what's one message that you want to leave the audience with that really encapsulate who Miss, who Fred Rosser is and what he represents? Um, I, I love talking to my grandfather. He's 96 years old, so much wisdom, still very witty. And um, uh, it, it, this can tie into the question. I always tell him, uh, Pop, and, it, and it's always the same answer. I said, Pop, if you had the world's attention for 30 seconds, what would you say? And he said, be cool and don't be no fool. So that's just simple advice from a 96-year-old World War II veteran. Be cool and don't be no fool. So, uh, you know, that's my advice to the world, especially in crazy times like this. Hmm. I hope this uh, thing does end, well, relatively soon, but within the meantime, uh, people, I want everybody to stay safe. Um, Mr. Rosser, I thank you for, I thank... I'm getting tongue tied here. Thank you yeah. for uh, chatting with me. Um, it, plug, go ahead, plug away uh, your social media uh, sites, if you will. Yes. Well, one thank, thank you for the support. You know, I always say none of us are strong as all of us, and however I can help uh, anyone build up their platform, uh, I'm going to do it. You know, so working with Fan Convo, being able to connect with fans like you and help elevate. Uh, their podcast, a product they're promoting, or be a part of a special virtual event. Uh, I just love doing it. And um, blockthehate.com is where it's at. You know, if you want to support the Block the Hate movement, definitely go to blockthehate.com. Follow me on my social media platforms Twitter, Instagram, at Real Fred Rosser, my government name, not Darren Young. It's at Real Fred Rosser, R E A L F R E D R O S S E R. And yeah, continue to block the hate with me, baby, and support me on New Japan Strong. Big things ahead for everyone on Strong, including myself. And I will be looking up, I uh, will be going and watching New Japan Strong. Best believe it, I will be tweeting it out every time I will be watching it out, uh, New Japan Strong more info. yes uh, yeah um i want to thank you i want to thank fan cover for doing for allowing me to do this and um i don't know how to end this properly but uh this has been my two cents podcast with g2 and mr fred ross i want to thank him again and that's all
Awesome. Keep grinding. Uh, that's that's the plan, sir. <laughs>